August 21st meeting of the Raleigh Conservation Commission. The meeting is hereby called to order under the authority of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw and Stormwater Management and Erosion Control Bylaw. Notice is given that both a video and audio recording will be made of this meeting. The agent will now call attendance. Arthur Page. Yep. Kurt Turner. Yep. Garner is absent. Jim Keys currently absent. Dan Shenick. Here. Sam Strife. Here. Howard Vogel. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum present. All right. The first item is payroll and or better bills. every seven years and that is my being reappointed as a notary public. Oh yes, yeah. right. <clears throat> that was gonna be more than that. It, it is. That's okay. All right. That's the that's the swearing in <laughs> fees. You getting it done in the report? Or? Actually I, I went to Haverhill. Haverhill. Yeah why not? Well it, Turns out apparently there's only certain city and town <laughs> clerks that are designated to, to uh, uh, administer this uh, commission. And Haverhill had like four, I think four out of her office. I happen to know the, yeah. the city clerk too. So. <clears throat> so I figured they had the best chance of my going over there on my, on my day off and having at least two. You have to have two folks. Is that the way they go? Yeah. No. Uh, one he swears you in and the other witnesses it. He needs to go into Boston. Yes, you can also do that. So this second one is for actually my getting my stamps yes, okay. in That's Boston that now have my new That's exploration new. date. <clears throat> will be uh, three minutes of the previous meeting. 
uh, with the July 31st, the May 29th, and the June 19th. We'll do these as three separate items. As everybody had, I know we just received it. Minutes for July 31st. Yeah, we had some duplicate <coughs> duplicate text in there. Okay. And that's been, that's been unduplicated. Any other problems or with this? See that and approve of what they've seen. All right. You accept that? I do, yeah. Okay, do I have a second? All, right. All in favor? Okay. All right. Abstain. All right. One abstain. Restriction at Dodge Reservation 390 Wordsfield Street, Map 18, Parcel Lot 7, Essex County Greenbelt Association, <coughs> and Town of Broward. Um, so, you, you is have, there anything different on this? And what we find? Well, okay, yes, you have red? you have a memorandum mm -hmm. that um, Town Council Town Council Judy Pickett and I have been working on. We had a slight setback in how these things are normally reviewed by the fact that Greenbelt um, did something to the electronic version which removed all tracked changes from it. That significantly set us back to basically going back to the earliest version we could find that in our possession that had tracked changes. And recreating that and starting the review as well as uh, town council <coughs> uh, due to doing it due to an injury has not been able to uh, work in the same sustained manner that she normally does but that being said so um, what we what we're presenting to the commissioners tonight if you want to we can go over it um, here in the meeting, or you can take a look at it. Um, we brought forth some questions about that. Uh, this has not been sent to Greenbelt yet, but with your approval, I'll, I'll 
sent to Greenbelt because we've got to get back in, in the rhythm of, of looking at this. We identified some parts which didn't seem to belong in there, parts mentioning about homesteading and mortgaging and stuff which don't really have anything to do with municipal held open space. They might have a lot to do with privately owned. <coughs> Uh, can you just uh, remind me again, what is the red? Is that yeah. changes? Well, okay, on the memo produced by town council, which is what you're looking at, yeah. uh, that's some commentary after she and I discussed, so the, the black text is what she initially shared with me, and then we went, went over some of the things, because it's something she was asking questions, and I provided uh, some clarifications, and, and then the, and what you're looking at there, is then um, some results of our conferring on this, as well as some other questions that we needed to get some clarification on. Um, one of the things is commercial recreation. With a, with a summer camp operating within the conserved area where campers pay a fee, we, d we don't know because I believe, uh, according to town council, there, the reliance is on a federal definition for what commercial recreation is. So, so we've got to find that out because in, in some cases, it, we don't want to prohibit the camp, obviously. Right. And, and yet, we have to acknowledge the fact that campers pay a fee to come and attend the camp. Now, they're paying the fee to a nonprofit an entity, but we don't know. So I mean, that was just a question that arose in us going over it because this is this is what we do. Um, so it is uh, it is giving you some of the minutia of some of the back and forth discussions we have as as we review these things. All right. Um, really. Just so you had suggested that we would uh, read this on our own time. Go we'll through it. In the meanwhile, you'd like to keep the ball rolling and well, like right. I like I like to uh, confer with town council and then share this commentary with Greenbelt so that we can start um, addressing and getting some of the, the verbiage changes. Right, we're not sure that we lost anything, but we definitely resulted in kind of a, a major slowdown here by us having to try and go back. It wasn't our intention at all, uh, but we didn't realize that the, the track diversion had been lost. All right, so uh, I would believe that it'd be fine for us to take this home, read it, but in the meanwhile, give you the go ahead to. Yeah. This has been a long, all these conservation <coughs> things are a long process. Well, yes. Get out of step, and it's going to. I mean, here again, with the. <coughs> The intention has been to get back into uh, some continuing progress with this particular CR, which um, both from the town standpoint and from Greenbelt standpoint did get uh, shelved for a while due to yes. other projects that were ongoing. So. All right, do I hear a motion to this would be to continue, continue, this, continue this without slowing it down? So I'm a, Go ahead. I'll second. Okay. Yeah, they must be very familiar with that uh, quasi commercial because that's what they do down at Appleton. Uh, you know, they, they're running yeah. non profit businesses out yeah, there. Well, so you sure know, the, the trick to reviewing this is you kind of <coughs> got to put that future cap on and you've got to think about activities, uses that might be occurring. You don't want to unduly restrict them. We um, also, one of the uh, recommendations in there from town council is to send this to the YMCA folks with a specific advisory that they possibly um, present it to their council uh, to look at. We've tried as much as possible. There's been substantial revisions to the camp portion uh, for us trying to anticipate infrastructure improvements that might be needed in the future. 
um, but not but not open it up to the wholesale construction of new of new structures, but allowing uh, like recently they asked us for a changing shed and worked language into there that allowed a changing shed for young children to change into their swim clothes to go to the pool because the pool structure only has a very fixed square footage and they have the good news is they have a demand of membership and young children attending. The bad news is that the Girl Scouts infrastructure needed some kind, needed in a sense a small, I think it was a small 10 by a 12 foot building. So. All right, now do we, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Conservation restriction at 42 Newby Road, Map 5, Parcel Lot 40, George <coughs> Sullivan Jr., uh, and Christine, uh, Christine Manson. So, Mr. Sullivan is here this evening, and this item is on the, the agenda solely for a status report. Um, in the course, in the course of receiving some documentation that was presented to the state. Mm -hmm. um, town Council and I started uh, having a shared concern by the fact that the order of conditions that the Commission issued for this project, which specifically required this, the conservation restriction to be done, and also an accompanying baseline report, for some reason that permit was omitted from being referenced in the master deed for the condo association and also the application form which acts as a cover when the CR document itself goes to the state for review um, it contained a factual error of saying that there was making a statement that there wasn't an order of conditions that governed this particular project <clears throat> So the commission may remember that at a previous uh, meeting, I think it was a meeting at the end of July, July 31st maybe, yeah. somewhere around that time period, um, Mr. Sullivan and his counsel, Mr. Lakeman, had come in and requested to send in for comments the CR document. Mm -hmm. At the time, we thought the CR document just itself was being submitted and in conferring with town council, we had already interacted with Mr. Latham and believed the document had gotten to the point where we would have both profit by having uh, right. the state's commentary because it usually always results in some types of revisions. Um, a large packet of information got submitted to the state that we were um, copied on and then it became apparent that there had been these omissions right. of not stating the order. Planning Board has a document certificate of vote that was appropriately um, attributed in various things. Uh, so Mr. Sullivan, I, and Mr. Latham had a call today um, to confer and to get ourselves back on track. Um, the baseline document, which did not have to go to the state, did also get included in the packet, but it was never submitted to our office for review was a revised version, so I've reviewed that. I believe all of the commissioners received my commentary on that, which was sent to uh, Mr. Sullivan's uh, engineering firm, Williams and Sparagis. Um, so we, we just need to um, huddle, I guess to use that, that term, and confer about getting uh, things appropriately addressed. Right. The, Mr. Latham and Mr. Sullivan have recorded an amended exhibit to the condo master deed which correctly references the order of conditions that is currently open right. and governs the project and requires the CR and the baseline report. Uh, 
Uh, so this is kind of just a status report as well as making sure the commission understands that we're, um, the town council and I are taking steps to get the various items that we believe need to be attended to rather immediately right. uh, to correct any factual errors or errors of omission and then we'll uh, proceed. And that also would allow us then to contact the state office and allow the state to initiate their review of the CR document. We asked them to hold up while we figured out what the ramifications were of the omission of the permit being cited as uh, or not being cited. All right. Um, you think it's going to take a long time, or is it? Well, we don't know because, of course, we're at the mercy of, of the state interfacing here. But, right. but I, I believe that the items that town council and I are going to be discussing with Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Latham uh, probably have a much shorter time span that they can be addressed. Um, okay. I would anticipate two to three weeks uh, that uh, we should be able to get. Uh, certainly get the CR application form, get that uh, correctly uh, answered and, and submitted to the state. And we're waiting for Mr. Rich Williams of Williams and Sparagis, who I believe is currently on vacation. Once he comes back from vacation and has an opportunity to review my commentary on suggestions for improvement to the baseline report, I'm sure at that point in time they'll be able to give us some type of time frame uh, for and making another revision of that and, and submitting it. Great. Because <clears throat> from my point of view, I mean, yeah, as soon as Rich does come back, I know Mike Council has really been on some of the comments, the other 12 or so comments that we got from last week. So my council has been right on those, getting those fixed, and hopefully we can get Rich right on the few other comments that need to be addressed. You don't have a copy of the one before everything was erased to you yet. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 that's a <laughs> different that's, that's oh, This is a totally different So scenario. hopefully, I mean, from my perspective, I'd really like to hopefully we can get this yeah. put yeah. together within the two weeks. Yeah, it's been a year, and schedule. Uh, yeah. been a year? Well, uh, almost. almost. Yeah, almost, almost. But, I mean, no one expected you to pick this up right instantaneously yeah. as soon as we issued the order yeah. of conditions. This so. particular part of it is completely out of my hands, so yes. there's only so much I can do other and than I'm making phone calls. <laughs> All right. You know. The major thing is for us to improve communications, because yeah. in, in many cases we have not known that his council has been taking steps on certain things until they all of a sudden appear. Yeah. And, and again, not to that's not being put out there as a criticism to diminish the involvement of what's been going on here because no one has had a lack of attention on this. It's just there's been a couple of different moving parts and not all of us have known the coordination of how things have been moving forward. Uh, but we're going to take steps uh, to correct that. Yeah, because the four to six week review process in the state levels this is going to become an issue, so we really need to like, get this wrapped up. And yeah. Well, we should be. So we, again, we've got it in there, and there's very discreet things which yeah. we're working on right now. So. All right. So at this point, we'll just uh, continue. Yes, and I would suggest an open continuance, yeah. uh, not specifying a date that would allow me to just bring it 9 back. Because 9/11 is real close. Well, uh, to bring it back, yeah. bring it back to the commission once we have some substantive things. Uh, to talk about. Uh, I will move that. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And the next item is an open space boundary change at 50 Newby Road. Uh, ONG Design and Development. Same thing you already submitted? The, I put a little bit of a change just put the square footage in there that wasn't in there Okay. I was okay. going to say because I've already provided them with okay. this, but this is fine. Okay. Oh, and you, co and you colored things for them too. That's yeah. always good. I didn't have time to color too. You like color. I think I have enough for everyone. I think I'm sure a couple. Yeah, 
know. We can you. Give it to the important ones, the ones who are going to vote on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where's the tank? Oh, there it is. So Tom Trumbly from o uh, ONG Development. Uh, this is 50 Newbury Road. Um, it's an OSRD. We're putting uh, nine new homes in. Mr. Hart, who currently owns the property at number nine here, um, expressed some concern once we started surveying and putting stakes on the ground, basically where everything was laying out. Uh, one of his concerns was the lot line ran right through his existing propane tank <coughs> in the back. Yes. Uh, number two was the location of the two parking spaces in relation to his home, which, which you, you don't have on that one. This is the, the drawing here. So you can see how close it is to his house. Right. Um, so what we propose is to move the lot line basically from this point over to here, which would allow the tank, which is basically in this section here, to be on his land. Basically, adding what's that, what's that tank for? Just for the house? Yeah, propane. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just for. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I, I think it's heat, and uh, I think he has a gas uh, stove as well. Um, so, like I said, that was one of his concerns, and the and the parking spots. So by moving this over here, we eliminate keeping the propane tank on the open space, and you know, you yes. won't have to move the tank as well. Right. Um, and as far as the parking spots, the, this whole area is a big hill on the back side of the uh, cul-de-sac. You can see how far it is away from the trail. So by moving the spots over here, number one, we're closer to the trail, but number two, you know, we don't have to take down as many trees and we don't have to disturb as much soil around the cul-de-sac because of the height, you know, the elevation. So. Uh, so I just, I just want to supplement. So as part of our process where I go out and verify and work with the proponent to make sure that limits of clearing are correctly marked, that's one of the factors that led to my being able uh, to work with uh, Mr. Tremblay and Mr. Boulay in regards to advising them about the possibility of what they might do right. in this realignment, uh, specifically to try and eliminate some of the grading cutting into the slope, mm -hmm. the loss of the trees that that grading would have resulted in, as, as well as the fact this point had already been surveyed, and by just changing this to a diagonal instead of coming straight down to the cul-de-sac, that preserved some of the work that had already been done in producing the survey work uh, for this property. And so um, they did revise the sheet today, you can see, because I did ask them uh, to give some type of indication of the square footage involved here so the commission would understand that even though this results in a slight loss of square footage of the 10 acre open space parcel, this also saves a fair amount of trees and grazing disturbance that was going to occur in that area. So it's it's up to your judgment, you know, to consider that. But there was an attempt made here to minimize the loss of trees and minimize the amount of grading and disturbance. Impact of that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, as well as make sense of the fact that we could not have allowed any portion of that propane installation to stay on municipal property because that would have been an unsurmountable liability to the town. So where was the old parking spot? Uh, so basically it was right here, right in this area here. So you just shift everything around? Yeah, yeah we just kind of moved around, which you know, kind of makes sense because that's where the trail is. And again, like, Brent said, you know, we're not disturbing as many trees there as well as uh, the ground because of the elevation. This is a pretty pretty well sloped hill in this whole area here, right. and it kind of flattens out over here. Yeah, because once I got over there and I'm asking them, well, where's the, because what we were doing, we were doing a, a dual, we do it, I believe, 
I'm going to go out there and find out whether this has been effective or not, that not only do we mark the trees that are to be cut, but we then immediately mark the ones that are not going to be cut in a totally contrasting manner. So the folks operating the cutting equipment can, can see, and, and I, use a har I use forest harvesting marking, where you mark the stump and then you mark it four feet up, so you know that what you marked has actually been cut. And then we mark using contrasting either yellow caution tape or, or white tape that stands out very stark at this time of year, it's very discernible. So we do a dual thing, where you can cut, where you can't cut. I don't see any problem with this, so mm -hmm. at this point, uh, uh, So the question before involved, the commission is yeah. if the commission will authorize and accept uh, this modification. They are working on the uh, deed with the uh, Mets and bounds and stuff right now, so so these folks are going to have to do the uh, the survey work to, to back this up. Um, but we, yeah, it's built on but we well, they have to produce a survey plan for us as well as I've asked for rods to be put in at these various points, so we'll always be able to locate these various bearing points um, on the boundary line uh, for the open space. And, and that work does need to be done. But I just want to make sure that this is acceptable to the commission. I have no problem with it. Does anybody have any no. issues with it? I will move that. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Our division road has a section of the road that goes down onto the salt marsh at a historic farm crossing. It's a restriction because they took two uh, flared in sections of concrete precast culvert and put it in there to uh, conduct the water from the tidal flow when it goes through the salt marsh creek that's at that point. Over the course of years, it's moved as well as, I think, the passage of equipment. I think the gearbox or whatever hammered away and chipped out the flared end. So they utilize this as a trail. And when the tide is coming in and this culvert is covered by water, it's extremely difficult to see that there's this particular gap at that location. And so they identified it as a liability issue. So the request was for them to be able to effectuate um, emergency repairs in patching that, uh, that section. <clears throat> and we know it is capable of being patched because they had actually done it before when they first opened Rough Meadows and it lasted six to seven That's years. That's a salt. Well, yes, right. but I mean, so, so anyway. Uh, so you know, I had um, contacted uh, Arthur and, uh, and Kurt and uh, 
stop permission, and so I had signed off on this. So I'm requesting that the full commission ratify this. Did you find out what it would be to completely replace that with a? Well, they are working on they are working on a strategy. At least that's what I've been told, and we may be seeing an application in the future for. Um, we've been talking about some type of sleeving uh, to cover this, but yeah, it's a, it's a balancing act because you can't bring in fill. You have to work with the pre-existing condition because it's in the salt marsh and it's in ACEC. Okay. All right. Yeah, the, the repairs is, the, you have to repair it. There's no right. question about it. Right. Well, they pointed out that the fact that they identified it now makes it e equally important for them to take action because More it's, a, it's, a known, know. it's a known issue in the document. Somebody took a picture. Right. Yeah. Lots of us have taken pictures. What do you need from us? Uh, just uh, a motion to confirm the issuance of the emergency. Emergency review. Well, he has such a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 to our 745 item. Legal Notice Rally Conservation Commission in accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, as amended and the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw public hearing will be held on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018 at 745, Room 5 of Town Hall Annex at 39 Central Street to consider the request for a determination of applicability for the application filed by Jessica Lewis for the proposed installation of a replacement subsurface sewerage disposal system, possibly with a 100 foot buffer zone, bordering vegetated wetlands, and 200 foot riverfront area of an unnamed stream at 789 Able Street, Map 5, Hassel Law 102, Raleigh. Good evening. Uh, Greg Hawkins from Williams and Sparagis here presenting Jessica Lewis for the uh, request for determination of applicability filed for 789 Haverhill Street. Uh, this is over the farm stand uh, that I think it's Dodge Road that spurs off of 133. There's a house that sits back. Um, if you walk through the woods, the garden style apartments would be up to your right just to get your bearings. There's a perennial stream behind the house, uh, unnamed perennial stream that I think flows from one of the mill ponds where the sawmill used to be. Uh, with associated BVW, the house, the house has been there for a long time. It predates the Weapons Protection Act regulations. Our client uh, recently purchased the house. It had, a, it had failed a Title V inspection. So this is to upgrade the um, existing <coughs> system that's currently in failure. It 
it's not breaking out of the ground, it failed just due to its proximity to the, the water table. So uh, DF, DPF Design did the permitting and a draft plan was bounced around the town by the bank and it was accidentally sent to Brent and that set up flares. It wasn't <laughs> accidentally sent to Brent. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, believe this guy. It was <laughs> made clear that a filing was necessary. So, so DPF Design reached out to us and we delineated resource areas and, and here we are. There's not a lot of options on the site. Uh, the 200 foot riverfront area almost touches Route 133. Uh, there was some ledge. They did have 84 inches before the hit refusal. The soils were pretty well drained, five minutes per inch, but there was still a class two sandy loam. Um, so the system's going out front, essentially under the existing gravel driveway. Where's the old system? The old system's uh, roughly in the location of the, the new septic tank that's proposed. Um, I think it's a single leach pit. And it was deep enough that it was actually in the water table. But pre and post grades will be the same. Um, erosion controls are proposed during construction. And when we had our site walk, um, Brent observed the backyard and the fact that the applicants, well, the prior owners, not the new owners, had been mowing very close to the resource area boundary. Um, so Brent had suggested uh, possibly providing some sort of a vegetated buffer, more than what's there now. Um, and then to, as a reminder, to put some type of post with a placard and just to keep people out in the future. So we presented that to our clients. They kicked and screamed a little bit, but ultimately uh, agreed and I thought that would be a, a good idea. Um, we are proposing one, two, three, six, six posts based approximately 25 feet apart. And it's it's a it's at least a twenty uh, ten foot setback to the the BBW boundary. A good chunk of them, I'd say four of them, will be right on the edge of maintained lawn now. But the three to the right are currently um, an area that's being mowed, so the commission will gain approximately ten feet in that area. Um, Brent had suggested a post roughly four feet high with a slope top and a placard adhered to the top. I think that's a great idea. We kept the note pretty vague. It just says proposed 10-foot wetland offset, no cut, no disturb zone, post, or equivalent. We're hoping the specifics could be conditioned or um, you know, installed to the satisfaction. We have a sketch. We have, <coughs> sketch. We have a sketch. Yep. Um, I will point out the, that the installation of the system itself um, is exempt from the Rivers Protection Act requirements just because it's an existing house um, and the system itself is is being installed in accordance with uh, with Title V. The work, however, to install the system is not exempt, and that's that's why we're here because it will be some earth work and it's fairly close to the resource areas. Any questions for the board? So the commission has in front of it, and if I may, I'd like to, to review because yep. uh, the other item uh, that should have been talked about was the uh, debris piles. But, oh, let's, right. uh, but let's go to the, this is <clears throat> this is a view standing in the area where approximately the system is going to be installed, showing how the grade goes down. You basically have a split level installation where the rear of the house you can walk out uh, out of the basement area based on the grading towards the front. But this shows the slope lawn area that the mowing goes all the way down uh, to the wetland resource area. <clears throat> so this is an area where the uh, post with the blue, uh, the stake with the blue flagging. That is, wall is right here. Is the wetlands delineation. Yep, the stone wall is uh, sort of a little, it veers off the property uh, boundary line a little bit, so it's actually not representative of the entire side property boundary. Uh, this is an area that's at, at the rear of the detached um, barn structure where there's a lot of mounded uh, gravel, crushed stone, and other de debris. Uh, which we discussed on the site visit that should be appropriately taken care of. It's, it's not stabilized. Um, it's What's got, it from? Well, it, it's, it appears to be maybe 
uh, surplus material from the grading of the crushed gravel area that's an approach to that detached barn, or it's either stockpiles from leftover landscaping? I think it's all of what Brent said. And the <laughs> zone ahead of the it's oh, it's yeah. stain and water. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He has plenty of machines. And they're um, they're more than willing to remove the new owners are more than willing to clean this up and remove all that. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, there's also some wood, whatever. I mean, you know, it's technically it's mostly the unstabilized piles of debris that need to be appropriately managed. They've got a wood stove in both the house and the barn, so I imagine that will be gone. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so this is just showing, so that the area that has been subject to the most mowing is that particular side corresponding to, where's your north arrow right there? So that's the easterly. The easterly side is the one where uh, mowing went right down to the very edge of the BBW <coughs> and where we hope to um, restore undisturbed uh, a vegetative plant community that will act as a filter strip uh, and buffer, which is what uh, portions of the buffer zone are supposed to do. But just to give you uh, a view here of looking exactly with back to the side property line, this is the very minuscule wedge that tapers off because up here there already is a 10 foot wide undisturbed uh, buffer zone area of natural vegetation to accomplish the screen <coughs> uh, So this, this way any runoff coming down off the lawn or whatever instead of it just dropping immediately into the freshwater wetlands is actually going to get uh, filtered out and screened a little bit. So that's where the idea <coughs> came from and also it pragmatically was viewed as not diminishing uh, the ability to use the backyard. They will still be able to play croquet, they can play volleyball, they might even be able to have a polo pony match back there and so do small horses. Uh, <laughs> I think it'll, it'll fill in fine without any additional plant things as well. Well, right, yeah. yeah. The idea is just to cease mowing. There's, there's a pretty vibrant, lush plant community there. You know. Once you stop chopping its heads off, it'll any questions for the board? And Brent, we've, uh, we've read this here, so um, <coughs> do you foresee any other issues with it? Well, no, if you don't no, have any concerns don't. now, I mean, so it um, was suggested, I, I guess I would suggest the only modification of, of my actually attaching the rough sketch detail of the of the posts, and we supply the signage so uh, so I can just uh, change a little bit of the verbiage to reference uh, mm -hmm. that sketch in detail and, and provide that. But my recommendation, if the commission is comfortable with this approach uh, to the condition of this property, would be for the commission to consider a negative determination option number three uh, with the conditions as presented with that modification of including the detail sheet of the uh, posting sign. We hear such a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Do you have a couple copies of this? I do. Thank you so much. This brings us to our 755 item.
which is the legal notice for the Rally Conservation Commission in accordance with the Wetland Protection Act. Mass General Law 131, Section 40, is amended in the Town of Riley Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Public hearing will be held on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, at 7.55 p.m., Room 5, Town Hall, Annex at 39 Central Street, to consider a request for the determination of applicability for application filed by Peter St. Clair for the proposed construction of a 12-foot by 24-foot single-story addition to an existing structure possibly within a 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetland 200-foot riverfront area of an unnamed stream at 151 Central Street, Map 24, Parcel 40, Raleigh, Mass. Hello. Go ahead. So this is, this is the... And you are? Peter St. Clair. This little part right here is the... Yep. If you don't have anything to say, then at this point, well, actually, we don't know enough about it. I'll turn it over well, to Brent. So, so let me point out that this is an application uh, for construction activity, but it is being filed as an RDA, yep. as opposed to a notice of intent. And so, so this is up for the commission's consideration because uh, the commission does have the option of determining that they feel that there should be a notice of intent application for this work. But I just let me returning to an older plan that was produced that uh, the commission utilized for um, issuing a certificate of compliance for the replacement septic system. So we have Brook over here. We have forested BBW. <coughs> we then have the driveway that goes to the garage under in the uh, wood framed dwelling. This was prior to your office being uh, put into the um, upper garage area. Um, so I actually don't know the vintage, but uh, the reason I wanted to, I thought this was uh, very illustrative here is that it's 140 feet from this corner, which is going to be the closest corner of this two-room, one-story addition. Um, and the reason that's significant is because these are just mulched landscape planting beds, which I'll show you uh, by some images in, the mar in, in just a moment. And this is paved area that now provides parking and entrance to get into the dental offices on the property. So Riverfront has a, a number of attributes that are considered to be um, uh, worthy of being protected under the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, those things include attenuation of pollution, attenuation of storm damage, um, Supplying groundwater, wildlife habitat. Um, let's see, I all the eight principles are pretty, pretty close uh, there. Drinking water supply. Well, actually, there are probably none of those. The only thing that is is probably needs to be addressed with this particular ap application. At least, again, uh, this is for you folks to actually make this decision is the stormwater that this impervious um, addition is going to uh, result in. Uh, there's, so I'll show you the site. So this is currently what that site looks like. There's a little bit of lawn area. There's mulched planting beds with some uh, spreading ground cover, a birch tree, uh, some other tree that's uh, closer to the uh, little inset corner. and four or five other, other shrubs in there. So this is where the construction activity is proposed. In considering conditions for the project, uh, which I uh, provided uh, you with 
basically kind of a draft. Um, usual provisions for erosion control, and then the only other thing I could think of was to possibly take some type of steps to infiltrate uh, the water coming off of that roof line. The water coming off of the two-story structure right now comes down to a downspout leader uh, that discharges there into the, into the mulch planting beds. So um, all other storm water from all the other impervious surfaces uh, runs right straight down to the edge of Central Street and the sidewalk area and then makes its way uh, sloping down to where the, the brook is, it goes into the brook. So... <clears throat> we, and it all slopes towards the road? Yeah. 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 Is part of this addition going to cover part of that driveway pavement area? Uh, no. Just short of it. Yeah, that's what the uh, the markings in this area. Oh, I can see, see these that. these red these red markings. That's that's the edge of this position. So they've got to do some excavating for the frost wall there. And I just I just mentioned uh, to Mr. Gagne, who's doing the construction, uh, the possibility of maybe doing some kind of crushed stone infiltration trench or something to to catch some of of the stormwater, uh, but the reality is that's why I thought that this application should come before you as a request to determine applicability. Uh, because even though it's a structural activity occurring in this location, this location has already been so significantly developed uh, that the, uh, the, normal, the normal values that we attribute and protect into riverfront area are not really manifested in this particular area, and the, and it seems the simplest way to make uh, make some type of environmental improvement is to try and mitigate some of the storm water that's already been uh, leaving that site. Yeah. It's a challenging situation. It it's actually more challenging because it has been so developed. But in riverfront area, you're required to do an analysis, and that analysis. In this instance, with such a developed area, really the only the only alternative to them doing this addition is to not do it, which is not going to substantially improve the situation there in regards to stormwater runoff. And so, um, the contract is not here, is it? Yeah, Mr. Gardner is here. Yes, sir. Uh, what about some kind of a uh, subsurface? Uh, Drainage, uh, let the solids settle out of it. Uh. Well, when I spoke to Brent, it seemed like the best alternative was the gravel pit. But yeah, I can also the take the crushed stone infiltration swale that's wrapped. We're still going to have several. You see the red space? Yeah. That's going to be the exterior wall. We're still going to have several Some feet grass. of lawn there, yeah. so that'll diffuse everything and absorb. If we take the whole <coughs> trench, 16 inches wide at foundation. Yep. Yeah put some material in there, fill it up with gravel, and I can even take the leaders from the main roof and put those in there too. Is there water problems in the basement now? Maybe? No. Oh, yes. Well, that's that's the other challenge here, is not to do something that's going to. Yeah, is we don't want a full basement. Well, we're, we're only going four feet. <coughs> okay. If no we're just going four yeah. feet, so we should go past it. And the, and the existing, this, this existing is crawl space too. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, so we get a lot of area when it does settle through the, the basement should come out fine. Yeah. Because there's piping in there and there's really no place to bring it to. Right. Right. And I know the area and it just, the, you know, the water table is up there, but definitely slow it down. I, you know. We'd probably actually improve it by taking the leaders on this side putting it in the pit too. Yeah, well I can see the other one right down there. Yeah, so it would be Yeah, so we'll put a bolt so in there. Yeah, that'll help. Talking about here? Uh yeah. no actually this roof this down spot right over. Oh, this down spot right here. Definitely is so we the take those two roofs, put them in there, that should actually improve the whole thing even though we're adding another roof. Uh, uh, what's else feel? Uh what's up? But it mentions rebuilding the deck that's gonna 
the deck on back? Uh, so, yes, I didn't realize this, this was part of that, but it's, I'm actually uh, making it, it's, it's, it needs to be redone, and it's falling apart, so uh, I'm actually making it about... We're shrinking that down by a few feet. By, well, by about by, by half. Actually. Yeah, it, it basically the rear deck's going to be cut in half. He doesn't yeah, need that big It's going to be the same type of structure as exists now. It, it's not being changed. We're going to cut about half of it off and then put new decking and new rails. So the footprint will stay the same minus what we cut off. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a line with the water. It's really a repair to existing, so it right. isn't something yeah. we would normally so I, I think that, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think the only thing we're really looking for is the runoff. Yeah. And Brent's idea, I think, of just I grappling it it is a great idea it's a very little maintenance it, there's really not much failure. unless we just put buckets and take it across the street you know it's <laughs> not just, a lot you just can do just do the street it'll flow down the street. Yeah. Uh, okay i think that that's the best situation that you could possibly do in an instance like this because um, it is such a fine line to walk um, what does anybody else have any questions or will there be any change to the, um, <coughs> the asphalt surface no no. That's not going to change at all. Nope. No. The addition coming back in will be just to that right side of the rail. <coughs> and if you can see that red marker, that there might be two inches of dirt there left. Yeah. All right. Um, now, you've seen the comments by. No, no one's seen those. Those were done okay. today. That's the usual comments that I just made for notes. For us to get a bearing. It's all pretty straightforward. Yeah. But you'd be acceptable with all that. You might want to do a contract just take a quick look. Really, nothing structural or. specific characteristics of this site. In the location, right? Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah this is pretty much straightforward. Yeah. Very straightforward. I uh, hope we don't have any big rainstorms in between or whatever. Well, well, as soon as we take the hole. Yeah. <coughs> All right, so in this case, we should make a... <laughs> so if you so choose, it'd be negative determination option number three with the conditions as discussed. So I hear such a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, it should be a good situation. Thank you.
This brings us to our next item, legal notice, Raleigh Conservation Commission, in accordance with the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw. A public meeting will be held on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, at 8.05 p.m., Room 5, Town Hall, Annex 39 Central Street, to consider the request for a determination of applicability for the application filed by Rafi Kazaban for the proposed soil evaluations for the design of a replacement sewerage disposal system, possibly within a 100-foot buffer zone of Coastal Bank and Salt Marsh at 51 Oyster Point Road, Map 27, Parcel 90 in Raleigh, Mass. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, Dan Johnson of Domestic Subject Design. I was hired by the uh, homeowner to replace his failing septic system at 51 Oyster Point Road. If you go down Railroad Ave, go right over the railroad tracks, take a left on Oyster Point Road, which follows it, it's all the way to the end, so the very end of it, as you can see with the assessor's map, it sticks out there. It's basically completely surrounded by the salt marsh on two sides, uh, even though the property is 100 by 145, the, the upland area is very small, I think Brent actually had a picture there. It, anywhere 60, 70 feet behind the house is uh, between the two salt marshes. It's a rough sketch to give you an idea. There's an existing garage with the studio above it and the existing residential house and a gravel driveway that goes to it. The septic system is right in this area right now, which is failing. What we're going to do is just do the soil test uh, within the area to just see if we find permeable soil. It is a, a Chatfield Hollis Rock outcrop. Hollis have actually pretty permeable soil. The challenge is to try to find two to four feet of permeable soil to uh, replace it uh, for the septic system. So I would propose to do uh, at least the bare minimum two soil tests out there. I do want to be completely upfront. You, we can be doing more than two just because of the nature of the shallow ledge. We need to try to find four feet, but bare minimum for repair to use alternative system, you need two feet of permeable soil. So, in theory, if everything went well, we'd have two soil tests back there to replace the failed system, but if we find shallow ledge, we might have to move around. We're in very close proximity, which we will probably follow up with to the edge of the salt marsh. This is maybe 50, 60 feet across, and this behind the house to the property line is maybe 20, 25 feet. So we're dealing with a very small area in extreme close proximity to the salt marsh and coastal bank, as, as the notice of pointed out. So the challenge is, is to physically do the soil test, log the soil tests in, and then backfill them right there and then at, the, at that time all will be done within the time frame of that day for which you scheduled to do the soil testing. Um, and, and it other? looks fairly flat. It is slow. Where are you going to be digging? It, it, yeah. really? well, it slopes. No, it all gradually slopes yep. actually. Yeah, every, every it's kind of like a high point right here and it yeah. Gently slopes to both sides. Yeah, every almost, every yeah. aspect, again, you can utilize, you can see the chairs sort of up on That's the, about the edge of the property line. The, the mound there. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's sloping and going to salt marsh over there. And it's sloping and going to salt marsh over here. That's the studio. The house is here. That's the walkway going to that patio that's at the back of the house. So, so there's... Um, <clears throat> there's exposure, if we want to use that term, there's exposure <coughs> to sediment transport and runoff on both sides <coughs> of the property. So the recommendation, I didn't have an opportunity to put together conditions for this, but I don't think I need to because I think the commission is, is well aware that really we need to just establish perimeter erosion control. It needs to be put in place prior to the digging. Uh, because even though the digging will probably be accomplished in one day, uh, there's a lot of exposure to the resource area. There's, there's not a lot of fringe or buffering uh, lush vegetation to act as a filter strip in this area. Um, you know, the, the lawn is, is vegetated, but it isn't real thick and lush as you get in that area because of the salt marsh or whatever. The things like grass do not find themselves at the most vigorous <laughs> anywhere near salt water. Um, so, so the precautionary thing to do is to, re, is to establish ahead of time using probably bark mulch, um, sock, 
or compost sock on either side of this exposure where it could go to uh, go into the salt marsh, get that reestablished. That way it will not uh, get in Mr. Johnson's way as he does possibly have to move around. Uh, and then they can just have <coughs> some salt marsh hay or something <coughs> that they can mulch the disturbed soil after they're done doing whatever digging they have to do. Uh, typic so typical conditions of having a spill containment kit, whoever is operating equipment there needs to have a kit of the, handle the volume capacity of the equipment that's on site, that the erosion control needs to be established ahead of time, and the office needs to be called to perform an inspection to make sure it's properly installed, and then go do your soil evaluation thing to your heart's content, give me a call when it's all done so I can come down and see that things have been mulched and stabilized and authorized the removal of the erosion control. Do you want to find that? Yeah, pretty straightforward. Pretty cool. And it's such a small lot that yeah. that's not much you know. That's, uh, any questions? Yeah, you, pro you probably only need maybe 100 to 125 feet mm -hmm. in order to uh, properly protect that really are here. Any questions? <coughs> Pretty much all we can do. I think. Mm -hmm. well, you can do it this time. Um, all right. Um, so negative option number three, number three. with uh, conditions as as discussed and okay. standard conditions. Second. All in favor. Uh, aye. aye. Thank you very much. Good day. Sure. <laughs> Try to we'll it. <laughs> Legal notice, Raleigh Conservation Commission, in accordance with the Wetlands Protection <coughs> Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, is amended to the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Our public hearing will be held on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, at 8.15 p.m., Room 5, Town Hall Annex at 39 Central Street, to consider a notice of intent. Application filed by Bruce Tompkins, Sarah Tompkins, Stephanie Discardis. The proposed construction of a single family dwelling, driveway, utilities, clearing, and grading, possibly within a 100 foot buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands at 600 Wethersfield Street, map 11, parcel 6 in Raleigh. Uh, good evening, my name is Greg Bernard, representing the owners. I just want to submit my letter notifications and green cards. Um, for those of you who aren't sure where this property is. It's located on the southerly side of Wethersfield Street, uh, west of Route 1, uh, roughly between Dodge Road and Hillside. Uh, the owners currently own approximately 14 acres. Uh, it's been traditionally forested. It hasn't been forested probably in about 20 years. It goes on about a 20, 25 year cycle. Um, I submitted two sheets for this. 
just to give the commission an, an overview of the whole lot because a lot of the wetlands and uh, jurisdictional areas are located off of the proposed lot. Right. If you got that one. small scale. Cheap too, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Uh, those aren't any good. They're not. Uh, yeah, just, no, you know? on that screen, it just won't uh, show. Okay, so it's about a 14 acre piece uh, in total. The Mill River doesn't quite bisect it, but it goes through the property. Uh, the wetlands and the uh, riverfront were flagged by uh, Wetlands and Land Management Inc. Bill Manual. Um, however, when he flagged them, his flags in this portion were up here in blue. But when I went out to locate them by survey instrument, there's a beaver dam out there, uh, roughly in this area. So water upstream has backed up right to the base um, of, of a steep slope and it, and it follows this wetland line. So I have shown the 200 foot riverfront area based on that, calling that the mean annual high water as opposed to the top of the bank. <clears throat> Brent and I were out there last week, uh, and we went over that. There is a, a very steep bank, at, at least a 10 to 12 foot drop from here to there, and, and roughly 20 feet. And the water comes right up to the base of the, uh, or the bottom of the slope, as do the wetland flags. There's a couple of wetland flag series. Um, one starts uh, over at a ditch. There's a culvert that goes under Mr. Burns' driveway at 620 Weathersfield Street and the ditch comes onto the Tompkins Desjardins property and flows down to the Mill River. There's a small wetland across the street and there's a culvert underneath Weathersfield Street that goes into a wetland and again follows the contours, a steep drop down here into a wetland area. And those are my series of wetlands that puts the 200 foot riverfront in this blue line here 100 foot buffer zone and we're going to propose a four bedroom dwelling. The buffer zone cuts right through the center of the house. A four bedroom septic system outside the buffer zone. A driveway on the left side of the property um, partially to mostly in the buffer zone. There's, a, there's quite a bit that's not in it. Greg, I'm going to switch to the other. Yep, please. Thank you. So this is a larger scale now. I'm off the large piece of property just onto the uh, the lot in question. I'm, I'm not looking for any kind of uh, delineation, determination um, far away from the property, uh, just the wetlands that are shown affecting this lot. So again, here's the, uh, the Burns driveway with the culvert and the ditch with the wetlands that go down to the river. So this is the A series. Um, the wetlands that was across the street that goes under the, under the road through the culvert. This is the buffer zone to, to that and the resulting wetland on the Tompkins property. And here's the buffer zone to that 100 foot. When we applied for soil tests uh, to, to run the perk test, we have to, of course, get permission from the agent before, we're, before the uh, Board of Health will schedule it. And at that time, um, Brent gave his okay for the soil tests. He had a couple of concerns about uh, especially two wetland flags over here. And I subsequently did some hydric soil tests, dug, dug some holes with a spade shovel, logged those, they turned out to be non-hydric. Um, and before my meeting with Brent last week, after we had some rains, I wasn't sure how much rain they had in Raleigh, but I went out and checked it and it was still all dry. I know it wasn't like Lynn and Peabody, but I, I, I thought if anything was affected, we'd see it. Um, proposed driveway on the left side, for, Weathersfield Street, the pavement of Weathersfield Street is higher than the lot, so, it's, so it slopes away. So there'd be no storm water um, from the proposed driveway running on the Weathersfield Street. The driveway is going to slope down towards the <coughs> garage on the left side uh, with a three quarter to one and a half inch stone on the left side of the driveway with the driveway pitch to the left to, to catch the runoff into the stone. There's a detail on that plan of the stone. And on the right side of the lot, 
the right side of the house, I'm sorry. We're proposing Caltech chambers to catch the roof runoff and infiltrate that into the ground. The board have any questions? I don't think I have any questions as to the substance, but in looking at your maps, I found your keys didn't match up from sheet one to sheet two. Your legends and your specifics of the dots and dashes and all that. There's several, several differences in there. It makes it hard to read the plans. Is, is there anything I can help clear up? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. You didn't submit these plans as a set. Did, if I recall, I don't believe you have got either of them la labeled sheet one of two or two of two. I think these were presented as two standalone plans, so uh, I'll, I'll check and make sure that the legend on the individual plan sheet is appropriate for the depiction of uh, resource areas and, and features on that plan sheet, but this wasn't submitted as being quote unquote a, a set. The, the, other, the other plan sheet was given to us more to acquaint us with the overall size of the property and the resource areas, specifically Riverfront and its uh, relationship because it, <clears throat> you know, was relatively far away from this lot. It was felt the commission would want to know sort of a, a clear depiction of the resource areas on on, this, on most of the, the majority of this lot. So basically, this is the only piece that's developed. Well, right. So, <clears throat> so this is a notice of intent application. Uh, for the development of a lot which is yet to be created, which uh, will need to be created in order to uh, proceed forward. And uh, the uh, applicant who uh, has had a number of different filings with us uh, pretty much has anticipated uh, most of the commission's uh, requirements on here, as well as the depiction of a 25 foot no cut, no disturbance zone. Uh, the only thing that I would like to point out uh, to the Commission is that in the rear area here where the wetlands resource area starts curving back as it follows the topography and goes down to the Mill River, uh, instead of continuing on monumentation of the 25 foot no cut, no disturb, it, they thought that this triangular area due to the property boundary was going to end up being quote unquote not of interest for future development activity and therefore they proposed uh, making this a, an extension to the no cut no disturbance area and putting a no cut no disturbance uh, post there to basically make it sort of make the geometry work a little better with its, with its intersection of the side boundary line <clears throat> on the property. So that's um, really the only only deviation to uh, to sort of our normal uh, modus operandi and requirements. Um, you know, if the commission so chooses, um, there has been a file number issue from DEP. There was no comments from the DEP uh, analyst or reviewer on this. Uh, the, Proposed activity is relatively straightforward, single family home construction with uh, associated grading driveway uh, and the subsurface sewage disposal system. And as they've already pointed out, uh, they made a number of opportunities to infiltrate uh, runoff coming from the impervious surfaces that are going to be um, developed on the property here. So if the commission so chooses, um, I believe it would be adequate to issue an order of conditions uh, typical for single family, uh, <coughs> single lot, a single uh, family home development on the property with, uh, again, standard requirements. This isn't in a drinking water supply area, and it's not um, near any other uh, identifiable uh, sensitive wetland resource areas such as vernal pools. Uh, so I would defer to the commission as to whether they wanted to uh, prohibit the use of rock salt, but um, we usually do that in drinking water supply areas or, or quite close to waterways or water courses or vernal pools. All right. Uh, is there any questions from anybody in the uh, audience? I don't know about it, but I do have a question. Well, 
Go ahead. If you would identify yourself, please, for the Mark Barringer, 115 Bennett Hill Road. Just a general question for my information. I, I didn't think you were allowed to build in the 100 foot zones like that. Is that something that is often taken exception to? We have a brochure right out in the hallway, uh, introduction guide to the Wetlands Protection Act. The 100 foot buffer zone is a regulated area under state law, it is not a prohibited area. Okay. In the town of Raleigh, our wetlands bylaw further uh, imposes the stricter condition that the commission considers the buffer zone to be a resource area to have functions that are worthy of protection and so it is subject to regulation. It's one of the reasons why uh, there is the relatively standard implementation of the 25 foot no cut, no disturbance area. The commission has the discretion to extend that to 50 foot if they so choose, uh, but they've made it kind of a policy so folks coming before the commission have some kind of certainty as to uh, how to approach development activities. Uh, but no, many houses, many residences, many commercial areas here uh, have been built within the 100 foot buffer zone. They are regulated um, sometimes for certain activities. You do not need a specific permit, but you do need to um, employ certain environmental protections such as erosion control for when you do a shed or a patio associated with a single family home as long as it's 50 or more feet away. So it's it is a regulated area, but not a prohibited area. Is it different if there's a pond in the back? Well, again, as I just discussed to the commission, we might consider the imposition of uh, prohibiting the use of rock salt because of salt's detrimental impact to waterways and watercourses and drinking water. Um, that's not the case in this particular situation. Uh, as, as well as you have to also understand that the applicant is making a concerted effort to infiltrate the runoff, which means directly um, get the runoff going right into the ground instead of allowing it to sheet flow across the surface and maybe leave the property, which then could also be an issue. Thank you. If the pond is a vernal pool and there are more strictures that are supplied. Are you prohibited? Yeah. Under, under the town's wetlands bylaw, if it is a vernal pool or a potential vernal pool, which means an amphibian breeding area, then the commission imposes a 100 foot no, uh, no. vernal pool habitat, no touch, no disturb. Thank you. Uh, Do you people have a question? Yes, uh, Richard Burns, 620 Weathersfield Street, on the Abutta. Uh, I do have a problem, and what's happening is it seems like I'm getting hit from every direction across the street from me, north, north of my home, they're putting in a solar farm. And I worry about the trees that I have there, the big 120 footers, whatever, pine trees. And it's, I'm losing my berms, and my trees are starting to come down. I just spent a lot of money taking down some trees, especially uh, roots and, that would take out my driveway. And now I'm going to get hit. Not only from the north side, I'm going to be getting hit on the east side where this home will be put up. And I don't know how many trees they're going to take down, what they're going to do with the earth, but it will affect my trees again. And I, and I'm, I do fear for the safety of my family. And under the town bylaw, it doesn't make reference to the safety and welfare of the community or the neighbors. And it's getting to a point where even when the, um, the oh, I'm sorry, my mind, the country, when the country club came in, uh, I also lost trees in the back of my land. And it's to a point, I don't know, know if Mr. Burnt, Burnt saw it, but a large tree came down and it cut off. I, I'm in a pie shape. All my, almost half my land in the back I can't even get to. And this is what's happening. I have no idea how many trees are going to be taken down and how much disturbance of the earth it will happen, what will happen. And uh, I know progress is progress. I've enjoyed the woods for 30 something years, over 30 years. And uh, I just would like to know when it comes time to know how many trees will be taken down, what will happen uh, in the future on my land. Um, we, unfortunately, we aren't the Conservation Tree Committee. 
um, with a wetlands protection. So What's it's all like just like with the, uh, the solo. We, we can we love to help you, but we can only help on what we are allowed to govern. And I do agree with you 100 percent, and I do feel for you. Um, I would hate to be the same, but I, there's not much I know I we can do. That too. But it doesn't mean you can stop squawking. I mean, yeah. Um, well, thank you for listening. I wish we could help. Now I'll turn it over to Grinch to fill us in on any other exposures that we may have overseen or whatever. Well, <clears throat> I, I'm actually in interested in, in feedback from the uh, commission. The uh, Again, this proposal seems pretty well thought out, uh, pretty much adherent uh, to the commission's uh, standards. Uh, and uh, you know, if the commission so desires, uh, we could issue an order of conditions. Um, we, in response, I mean, all I can say in, in response to Mr. Burns' uh, concerns is the fact that the commission does uh, now implement a much more stringent policy in regards to governing uh, the clearing that occurs on the property. The proposed clearing is clearly marked on this plan and proposed to uh, have erosion control on the perimeter. Um, that particular strategy has worked um, pretty well and pretty consistently for the uh, past 14 years that I've uh, worked in the town of Rowley in regards to uh, to al allowing an adequate yard to surround the dwelling, which uh, is both for the purposes of being able to maintain the dwelling, as well as to provide um, you know a quality living living environment for the future property owners. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, the only uh, specifics uh, beyond our normal is to require proof of the creation of the lot. No. We do also, as a standard, we make sure that the uh, subsurface sewage disposal system is Title V compliant by just confirming with the Board of Health. That, that which they won't look at until there's a... Right, well, right, right, we right, say, yeah. right, which is why we put that in our order so that the fact that we issue an order still allows us to uh, make sure that that particular step is taken. And here again, that's because that then we... Uh, our regulations presume that as long as it's Title V compliant, that there's no detrimental impact to groundwater uh, quality or quantity based on subsurface exposure. No, it's not up to us. I would, I would like to say, but um, you aren't encouraging a contractor to go in and cut down every tree. We actually had a discussion on site about a possible adjustment uh, to the driveway to take into account. Um, a street tree, but on close examination, the particular street tree that we zeroed in on is actually suffering, and the community will be, be better protected by it being removed <laughs> since it's probably one of the ones that will fall in the very near future. And if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, th this may help Mr. Burns see how far away we will be. Um, this point of the proposed uh, erosion control is uh, approximately 30 feet from the lot line. This area in here, which is on Mr. Burns' property, is still wooded. Um, this point of the house is, a, is a, roughly 100 feet from the property line. The house might be 70 feet from the property line, and the erosion control is about 60, 55 feet from the property line. Um, Mr. Burns was very helpful to me out there. Uh, locating potential property lines in the, in the history of the property. And we didn't want to bring a silt fence right along the 25 foot and clear all the way up. We, you know, we'd like to provide them with as much buffer as we felt feasible for the marketing of the property. Um, and I understand his concerns, which we've tried to address. So you're saying there's no cutting that's going to be done outside the erosion control? On this application, that's correct. If they, if well, that's our and that's our yeah. typical requirement. No, I'm just saying. I just want to make it clear that that's the situation. That'll be up to you to police that for us. But I'm sorry, don't be. A That'll be up to you to police that for us. Well, I probably we make sure they don't have chainsaws outside. 
which isn't to say that a future owner may approach the board at a later date oh, sure. requesting it. We but, understand. But as far as this as application, this application is concerned, application. we are not. All right, I think that covers pretty much everything that, uh, that we are allowed to con control. So at this point, you would like to have a... If the board so chooses, um, close the public hearing and issue a notice of an uh, order of conditions, excuse me. Uh, uh, right in front of me, 63-677, with standard conditions as well as conditions as discussed for this application. So moved. Here a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You guys aren't just having a good year this year, are you? subdivision designation which again they can designate whatever they want to and yes they they made a change oh they did make a yeah change. they made a change but it's it's, it's, immaterial, so it's immaterial to us because until the lot is created we utilize the assessor's official designation for the location and identity of the property the problem so it, is we were talking about that lot yes which, as I pointed out, is yet to be created. So technically, we were looking at the whole thing, but that plan was done. That's why we require the creation of the lot, so that we then can narrow things down to uh, where we really need to regulate that construction activity. <clears throat> Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, is amended, and the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw public hearing will be held on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, at 8:30 p.m., Room 5, Town Hall, Annex 39 Central Street, to consider a notice of intent for the application filed by Rocco and Lucy Tulio for the proposed construction of a 60 by 28 L-shaped addition expansion of an existing driveway, demolition of an existing deck, rebuilding of the same, regrading of the existing infiltration basin, possibly within 100 feet of a buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands at 137 Hillside Street, Map 19, Parcel 1, Lot 11, Rowley. Good evening for the record, John Morin from the Morin Cameron Group. We are here tonight representing Rocco and Lucy Tulio for a notice of intent application filed for their property located at 137 Hillside Street. Uh, here's the abutting notifications. Thank you. So the Tulios are looking at adding an addition onto the back of the existing dwelling. Uh, the dwelling was built early 2000s. Um, an RDA was filed back in 2013 for the installation of an above ground pool. Um, and what the Detulios are looking at doing is the plan that you see before you, I can show you up on the screen. Existing dwelling is located here, hillside is down at the bottom left. Mill River is actually located uh, way out back on the back of this property. 
if you scaled out of the plane a little bit, you'll see that the 200 foot just clips the back corner of the lot, but it's well outside the 200 foot uh, riverfront. So existing dwelling, there's an existing dwe uh, deck and a covered porch on the back of the dwelling. It's a full walkout basement, garage under house. What they're looking at doing is uh, they're proposing an accessory in-law apartment with another garage bay. So that'll all be located at the, uh, the basement level, which again is at the garage level. We met with the zoning board last week as we're required to get a special <coughs> permit for that use. Uh, they approved the special permit. They'll be <coughs> issuing that at their next meeting. So wetland resource area is located on the property of bordering vegetated wetlands. As I had stated, the house was built in early 2000. Uh, at that time, um, I'm not sure why, but the engineer at the time filed a stormwater, uh, designed a stormwater mitigation system for the lot development. Uh, in his narrative on his notice of intent, um, he was discussing that he felt at the time that the uh, stormwater standards from Mass BEP applied to the single family lot. So instead of trying to fight that, I don't know if that was actually the case or not, but I wasn't going to get into that because it was already issued. So what we did is we actually re-engineered uh, the existing drainage to um, pretty much accept the proposed increase in impervious surface based on the addition and the driveway. So originally the house was proposed as part of the design they had a swale that was catching the runoff from the roof, runoff from the driveway, coming down the swale pre-treatment into an infiltration basin which then had a low flow outlet pipe which went out and then an overflow weir that also discharged during higher storm events. The wetland resource areas at the time very similar to what they are now. Um, what I didn't mention, Mike DeRosa, DeRosa Environmental, delineated the wetlands uh, for us. So as I had stated in 2013, an above ground pool went in, kind of went in right in the swale. Um, water still gets around that pool down to where the ponding area was designed and built. So what we did is we looked at um, drainage mitigation measures. We were thinking of potentially doing uh, maybe some infiltration chambers. Uh, we dug, dug a test pit out there to verify soils. And the problem with the infiltration chambers is to capture the roof runoff associated with this addition, we're also capturing the roof runoff for half the existing house. So we started getting to a point where the infiltration chambers were getting a little mm -hmm. big and it just wasn't cost effective. So we looked at the possibility of just expanding the existing infiltration basin and what we found is that we do have the space. Uh, we could actually, right now the existing bottom is at 47. We can open up the bottom of the pond a little bit, maintain the three to one slope, and we can get the size that we need. We did submit a drainage report with the application that covers all the drainage. Based on the change in the pond, we're able to provide enough volume below the outlet of the pipe, I mean the outlet of the pond, that we can meet the stormwater criteria <coughs> for the recharge volume now necessary for the proposed development, including the impervious area pre-developed. And we can also meet the water quality volume uh, for the proposed development, including the pre-developed impervious area as well. So we're able to mitigate for the proposed increase in roof area. As I had stated in the application, or as stated in the application, right now there's an existing deck that's at the same elevation, first floor level as the covered porch. That deck's gonna come off so that we can build the addition. Uh, the covered porch is much more of a, a bigger structure, so that can remain and they'll support that while they're putting the new structure in. Then the deck will be rebuilt over the uh, proposed addition. There's no proposed changes in grade. Uh, we're fortunate enough that as you come out, as I had stated, this is a full walkout. There's a pretty level backyard before it drops down to this swale. So the size of the addition was based on the minimum criteria or the maximum square footage allowed under the zoning bylaw and based on where that slope is. So very minimal changes in grade. We do have to make some grade changes over by the driveway to get that additional pavement to get over to that third bay. <coughs> Again, all this runoff is carried down through the swale 
to the pond, and the pond's been enlarged to mitigate for the proposed increase in, run uh, increase in runoff based on the proposed increase in impervious surface. Uh, we've revised the plan to just show some additional um, points of interest or information that Brent was looking for. I met Brent out on the site last week, and we were proposing infiltration, um, proposing sediment or erosion controls on the outlet of the pond so that when the pond's built, if it wasn't established and something flowed out, we'd have erosion controls there to prevent any sediments from carrying down into the wetland. Brent recommended that we also carry erosion control along the TOA slope um, of the swale so that during excavation for the frost wall for the addition, if we get any heavy rains and something happens to carry down that vegetated slope, we'll be able to keep it out of that swale and not have to worry about having to deal with trying to pull sediments out of that swale in the future. There's no signs that water's ever ponding in that swale. Everything looks like it's working fine. The soils are pretty well drained based on the test pit that we did. Uh, septic systems out front, so it's not going to be an issue. And the when the RDA was filed in 2013, one of the criteria under the RDA was there was a kind of a odd shaped no disturb zone to allow him the room to actually put the pool right in the grass swale. So what we did is we mitigate or we've uh, superimpose that no disturb zone on this plan and as part of that RDA they were supposed to put two placards in post those haven't been installed so we actually show those on our design plan to be installed and there was one there and one there what is your the dark line that just clips the house on the street side here uh, yeah, we did. This? Yeah, what? No, <coughs> the dark line, the dotted dead. This? Right there, Brent's going to. Oh, that's the 100 foot buffer <coughs> off the um, wetland edge. Off the what? Off the what? Yep, so off here's the. the foot. That's our regulator. That's the 100 foot buffer zone coming off the, the wetland right there. Now, where's the driveways? Driveways over here on the left hand now, side. Everything flows in. back towards Mill River, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. But this swale was built, when they designed the lot, the swale was built to accept all the flow from the driveway in the house. And then that gets directed over to that pond. So one of the changes, so the plan was revised to show that <coughs> it would be additional uh, sedimentation control along here. And then Brent also asked us if we could add the date the wetlands were delineated. So I brought two revised plans that has that information on it as well. Uh, there is a DEP file number, there were no comments, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Any this, questions on the board? Is this a, um, I don't want to say, is this a full two stories? No, or it's single story. Single story, so you're doing a foundation? Just a frost wall. Frost wall. Yep. Four foot frost the wall. The whole thing. Yep. Yeah, so the front part of it, this section's the garage bay, and then this section back here is the in-law apartment, which is all one level. Any questions by the audience? The deck is being reinstalled over it. Correct. I understand that. I just thought it was garage in there. Yeah, it is a garage under, so your first floor is roughly about eight feet up in the air. Yeah. So that's the bottom of that covered porch is about eight, nine feet up in the air. So the addition yeah. goes under that, and it's one <laughs> level. Okay. Well, Mr. Morin is actually being kind about the requirement for the no cut, no disturbance post. The, actually, the commission's evaluation when the proposal came in for the pool discovered that there should have been a variable with no cut, no disturbance error imposed because the perimeter erosion control for the limit of clearing when the house was developed actually crossed over what had been the flat 
fixed width, no cut, no disturbance zone, which extended into what ended up becoming developed rear yard. Um, <clears throat> so that was a little bit of a faux pas that we sought to correct uh, when it was discovered with the evaluation for the RDA for the pool. And of course, the RDA for the pool was the result of the fact that the pool is being, uh, was being located 50 feet or closer to the uh, delineated edge of bordering vegetated wetlands, which causes the need for a filing, um, even in the case of a single family home. Another reason for requiring that erosion control be implemented at the bottom of this slope is because one of the reasons the pool is situated there and wasn't considered a blockage to the flow of stormwater runoff coming down in this direction is because the pool is installed on a bed of gra a permeable gravel and sand. So it actually acts as a it's filter. Above ground. Yeah, yeah, above yeah it's ground. above ground pool. So it actually acts as a crushed stone sand infiltration area that doesn't block the flow and probably actually intercepts it before it even gets to the to the basin and, and goes down into the into the right. rear, rear yard. Incorporate that in your design. Yeah. Well, now. but again, that's why the that's why the idea of the positioning of that erosion control so fine silts and sediment won't come down and clog okay. that gravel bed that's uh, existing there underneath the above ground pool. Um, so the. Sorry, I didn't have a prepared uh, nope. memorandum from this, but the recommendation uh, to the commission is uh, a pretty typical uh, notice of uh, order of conditions uh, for addition work to a single family structure. The uh, only exceptions to that will be um, clearing and reestablishment of the ability to get in and actually inspect uh, the condition of the riprap overflow and and this area here, it's uh, very well overgrown, real thick. Uh, basin has to be cleared out in order for it to be enlarged. So at the same time, just going to require that this be brushed out so we can actually uh, make sure that either of those areas don't need some type of um, After 18 you know, years, it's going to be a, whatever. be a benefit to clean it up. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, so. This is, the commission is working with the same circumstance that Mr. Morin had to work with, and that is because it's a designed, permitted stormwater infiltration system, we are obligated to make sure that it is adequately maintained and functional, even if we have absolutely no evidence that stormwater has ever reached that basin and actually been um, detained in, in, in that area. We do have to make sure that it's functional. And no, you the, can't see any. Uh, actually, right now with uh, the blackberries and everything oh, there, it's oh, it's yeah, that bad. Yeah, yeah. You, okay, <laughs> you go in. <laughs> but but I had scoped this out back with the pool application and had actually been able to get in there. It wasn't this time of year with everything with thorns having put on. Should there be an annual mowing on that? You just in the flow area. No? Well, again, I if we if we brush hog it out and expose it, plus the construction work that's on there, it's, you know, it, again, because, because the volume that it attenuates is relatively low, and again, the fact that we don't believe that it is triggered and actually has to do anything that often, therefore you don't get sedimentation clogging up the bottom of it or the need to clean the forebay or right. whatever because we're not sure it actually sees anything. But it, it's there and we're obligated to make sure that it's maintained and, and at least kept in a functioning condition while we're uh, governing this particular construction project. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? So without any further questions, we should have a come to a uh, close the public hearing and vote to issue an order of conditions with typical conditions for addition construction as well as special conditions as discussed. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.
Conservation Commission, in accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Mass. General Law 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw public hearing will be held on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, 8:45 p.m. Room 5, Town Hall Annex at 39 Central Street, <coughs> to consider an amended order of conditions. Application filed by Bruce Tompkins, trustee, Tompkins Jardis Trust. Request to amend proposed construction of six duplex buildings with associated roadways, driveways, utilities, stormwater facilities, grading and possibly within a 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands at land off Daniels Road, Map 9, Parcel 23 in Rowley, Mass. Mr. Chairman, may I briefly interrupt? Mr. Yes, Mr. please. Mr. Coolis, you're here representing the applicant. Mr. Coolis, are you here representing yes. the applicant? Right. Do you have the certified uh, butter notifications, the return receipts? I believe I left those off at the office, at your office, Brent. When would you have done that? Uh, when was that? Today? Oh, no, this was a... Oh, you provide certificates of mailing? Yeah. We had a problem where this application was deemed incomplete and originally filed. One of the reasons for, for that determination was the fact there had been no proof of notification of the butters uh, provided when the application was filed. Uh, so but you have that now? It's, yeah. yeah. yeah so Go ahead. The commission may proceed. Um, the original order of conditions proposed uh, 10 duplex dwellings. Uh, which would mean 20 units. And, and what we're proposing now are 12 single family units. Uh, and uh, which would mean less density. Um, 12 single family, oh, uh, six dwelling, buildings. Single family dwellings. 12 dwellings or six? Oh, 12. 12. 12. Okay. Uh, would mean less density, would be 12 families versus 20 families, resulting in a 40% reduction. Be less traffic, 12 families versus 20 families, resulting in less traffic on Marion Way, the proposed street, and, and on Daniel Road. Smaller septic systems. Uh, the previous submission had 60 bedrooms. And the proposed now we only have 48 bedrooms, resulting in a 20% reduction. The fewer driveways means less impervious surfaces, resulting in less stormwater runoff and possible pollution. And this design is more in keeping with the neighborhood of single family dwellings in the area. Uh, I think if you go to the proposed conditions planned to Brett that would be helpful. There you go. <coughs> yeah. And we have a, a construction of an 840 foot roadway uh, with a turnaround located in this in this area. Uh, we have an infiltration basin here 
that catches the uh, storm water from the high point in this area and back and, and, and back in the infiltration basin there's a uh, system of pipes that we've designed that takes the runoff and percolates it back into the soil. Over in this, oh, and then we, the, the, the road is super elevated, meaning that it, uh, uh, the drainage flows to the right into an 18 foot wide, nine inch deep parabolic channel. And from there flows into two 18 inch pipes into another infiltration basin located there. From there, any overflow flows into a stone channel through a weir and in, into the wetlands. Uh, The fire department had concerns about some of the driveways, so we increased the driveways here to 14 feet, feet wide and on this lot there to 14 feet wide. Um, the septic systems are located in the back of the lots, up through here. And we show them a hundred foot buffer. The red line is the hundred foot. The red line is a hundred foot, and the wetlands are in blue. In blue. <coughs> and like I said, the, the original proposal was for 12, uh, 12 of the uh, duplexes. Well, now it's, I'm sorry, 10, 10 duplexes, and now it's 12 single families. Any questions for the board at this point? Uh, I think I better explain for the board what is actually jurisdictional, because a lot right. of what's being talked about actually isn't under the commission's jurisdiction at all. Uh, so for the commission's edification, I requested uh, from Mr. DeCoulis that he provide a specific breakdown of areas of the project that are subject to regulation, um, this, this revision of the project. Uh, so construction of septic systems on lots 2 through 6 and lot 7. And I'm having a hard time reading your lot numbers because there's a lot of, a lot of detail okay. in there. So actually, you know, I'm going to do this. See. So basically, it's just going to be this and the other end. We're going to go to this one. Uh, just so we can. Uh, so I, I can show you. So, lot two, three, four, five, six, and then lot seven. Okay. Construction of a portion of the dwelling on lot six. That's that lot. <clears throat> Construction of the driveway on lot six. I'm going to switch over to the other plan now. We're talking about the actual activities. So construction of 20 feet of the paved road with 12 inch water main and 15 feet of 18 foot wide by nine inch deep grass drainage channel. Uh, what section is that in, John? Is that is that just down here, also adjacent to Lot Six, uh, where we actually have some of the roadway? Where are you on that? Sheet? I'm on number five. Uh, excuse me, number four. Excuse number me. Four. Construction of 20 feet of paved road. That's that's the only place that I see the 100 foot buffer zone line coming up into where it looks like you've got proposed pavement. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's in the lot six area also. Construction of portion of the infiltration basin number two <coughs> with eight feet wide by 30 feet uh, 
foot long stone channel, construction of a small portion of the driveway on lot 7 which is right here, and proposed grading as depicted on the proposed conditions plan inside the 100 foot buffer zone. Well that's probably referring to there's some grading on lot 1. Correct. So, so when the first order was issued, because of the entire stormwater system brings a lot of the runoff, there's a small portion of the runoff that gets infiltrated up here, but predominantly the whole system brings it down uh, to where it then goes into the 100 foot buffer zone in that basin and then is discharged. So originally the commission required a third party review of the stormwater infiltration system. I'm making the same recommendation to the commission now that I believe the commission should uh, contact uh, Horsley and Witten who had done that a review and, and see uh, what they would uh, propose, their timing and the amount of money to reevaluate this because the change to the overall system is, I think, significant enough that it would, uh, that both the commission and the applicant would profit by having a third party review to make sure that, that this reconfiguration. The well, yeah. Development uh, is justified. Yeah. But everything flows to the back, right? Except for, except for the small portion in the front, in the front here where where this comes down to meet and, and uh, intersects Daniels Road, as well as some of the line of sight grading work that's done to meet uh, requirements of the planning board, I believe. Right. John, how did your own stormwater calculations differ between the duplex approach and the single family approach? Um, there's, a, there's quite a bit of difference. Is it greater? Impact, uh, but less. Uh, it's, it's less of an impact because there's more uh, impervious areas, fewer driveways. More impervious. Well, that should be less. Less. Isn't that what they said? No, you, you said there was more impervious area. Imper. Yeah, you, more, you, more you meant you have more pervious area impervious. by a reduction right. in impervious. Right. I guess my next Say question, that 20 times fast, right? <laughs> my next question is, did our peer reviewer show a significant difference on the first go-around between their calculations and her calculations? I think a better question is it did result in a redesign, uh, especially a reconfiguration of the uh, basin at, at the front and brought up questions of functionality uh, uh, through all seasons for other other parts of the system? I guess I'm a little concerned, um, not being an expert in this area, that given the reduction in activity here across a broad spectrum, um, why, whether it's really necessary to impose a, a second peer review cost on the applicant. Um, it strikes me intuitively that the impacts are going to be less than, than, than they were the first time around. I can only provide you with the, the professional opinion that due to the change in nature, number of structures, uh, different configurations uh, for the placement of those structures, uh, that. I reckon, and as well as choosing the previous peer reviewer is going to result in the uh, less amount of, of a cost involved and again this discharges into a fairly, relatively large as, as well as a water course, an interm intermittent stream area that has very large associated emergence wetlands on either side of it at this particular It's no well field though, right? There's no oh no, no, this is not drinking water supply. but. But again, the, there's going to be 12, 12 different folks making this their home, and it would be good to know that the stormwater system is going to appropriately treat, mitigate, and infiltrate uh, the runoff because there's still going to be 12 structures, there's still going to be 12 driveways, and there's still going to be that length of roadway that's all going to be bringing stormwater 
right directly down towards an intermittent street. Is your roadway design the same, with the possible exception of where driveways come into it? Um, yes. Yep. And is your basin design at the at the Daniels Road end basically the same? <coughs> it's, it's better because now we hit, we're infiltrating more into the soil with it, correct? Intuitively, I don't think it's necessary. But the commission is free to decide otherwise. Hmm. Right. So what I'm here to say is there's been significant change between this plan and the last plan. And based on that change, we don't know. Well, I'm also pointing out that the first review resulted in redesign and, and reconfiguration of the system. And, but it was based on that that layout and that design and so I just I just yes I'm being cautious but I also think this you know the project the project changed. No, this is fairly sophisticated. Right. That's super complex, right? Uh, and I'm not I'm not questioning well, the adequacy of his design. You're just I'm just saying I out. I believe someone who's quali a qualified professional should review it just to make sure um, that everything would still work as as designed. That it would be adequate. Uh, theoretically, it shouldn't be a full. Uh, I have no idea how the billing would be, but having already have the old plans to overlap. The new well, plan. right. These folks are going to be relatively up to speed, and now that we've gotten information uh, specifically relating to what the project changes are, I believe that would uh, put them also in a a better situation where they would just have to utilize the um, minimum amount of time necessary to adequately uh, review the new design. Okay. I, tend to, I tend to agree that yeah, it's worth it's worth a, a, a second opinion Good just line. to have a uh, good size project. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing. It's not there's been significant so change. Would you get a vote on this, or um, I didn't want to propose. Well, yes. I mean, the commission should entertain. Uh, well, even if you decide not to uh, affirmatively vote for it, the motion should be to uh, to engage the services of the peer reviewer, uh, specifically the peer reviewer of the previous project, so that they don't have to um, yeah. do any backstepping to get up to speed. So there should be two items. So that would be one, and then to go ahead with the project. Right. So why don't we do the first one first? Is uh, how many of you feel that uh, you'd feel more comfortable having it this since this drastic changes in the project, having it reviewed again? So we're just gonna take a vote on that. This is not a motion. Yeah, this is just just a peer, vote. peer yeah. review of the stormwater. Uh, we're doing a vote on whether there should be a peer review. Whether we feel yeah. there should be a peer, yeah. peer review. I, I think there should. Be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. First, first oh, I get a vote. <laughs> no, I think there was one a few years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now the next item would be where we, based on the peer review. Well, we no, we we mm -hmm. need the vote to continue. To continue. Because number one, I need to I need to uh, request a quote, and right. then we then we need to convey the price quote to the applicant and their representatives. If they, agree. if they so choose, they can deny to pay it and force the commission then to, you know, make a decision without that information. Uh, but e either way, that that's the process, and the commission has has been provided the ability under statute to uh, to seek the services of qualified professionals to conduct peer reviews and have the applicant pay for it, for that peer review. As well as I'm also going to find out timing or whatever. So you're looking for a motion to continue? I'm looking for a motion to continue. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Right, thank you. Now, which uh, which corner is this? Is this is by the factory? It's before it. Before the, before the wagon factory. wheels. Yeah, just before, before the wagon factory. Yeah. Wagon factory is right there. I'm just, sorry? But you just see the wagon factory right there now. I think it's yes, that yeah. oh, yeah, right that's there. right. Right there. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much. So that would go in. Now, where would Ricker's farm be? Uh, well, no, I don't know if they actually even show any of his property. No, because fine. Daniel Rhodes it would be right around down here that location there. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to get it. Yeah, I, haven't, right, I haven't right, done right, much so. out back there on that side. Actually, um, I think we should move to uh, agenda items where someone is in yeah, attendance yes, please. to actually uh, resolve. And since Mr. Kaufman is here representing yes. Gateway Two, uh, do we? Um, so, do we want to read the, uh, the first status reports, permits, and enforcement, stormwater management, and erosion? Where am I? Second page. Yes. Okay. Stormwater management. Erosion Control Bylaw Enforcement Order SMP number 12-2014 at 12-40 Forest Ridge Drive, Map 7, Parcel Lot 9, Gateway 2 Trust of 1997, John T. Coughlin, Trustee, Violation of Limit of Work by Tree Cutting. Do you want me? Do you want me to? You can go ahead, ahead if, you, if you want. No, honestly, John, none of this is to my liking. No, no it's fine. It, it happened. It, it happened. It, it, I mean, that's it, why it, I'm here. Exactly, and and so we're going to. It wasn't intentional, which we, I think you're well sure, aware. Of. Oh, absolutely. It happened. Absolutely. Any pictures of it? I'm sure he does. Plan with the that, that's that's, this, yeah, yeah, that's okay, what I'm, work, I'm that's working on right good. now to to just kind of set the yeah, stage yeah, and yeah. and just talk about what what happens. So there you are, right there. So in the process of I was working with his uh, construction site manager, uh, Jerry Donahoe, and we were marking out the limits of of clearing, including what would be cut, what wouldn't be cut. The design, the commission may remember the large deposition of dumped fill uh, from many years ago, although I think uh, probably only maybe half or a third of the commission was on at that time. So just past that, the plan design called for this notch not to be cleared. And this was from uh, Meridian associates uh, design and so uh, with his uh, site manager Jerry Donahoe and I had marked out and carefully uh, positioned what we thought was very colorful coordinating contrasting ribbons directing the tree cutting folks to go up this sort of little side slope of the big pile of fill and, and go around here and preserve this area. Unfortunately, what we didn't realize is that someone in the tree clearing equipment sitting 12 to 14 feet off the ground who was looking in this direction because this was the direction he was working, he could see through this narrow 
width of woods and he could see the colored ribbons there. And we didn't think, you know, we thought they had an idea of where they were going and we didn't anticipate someone who just looked straight ahead and didn't look right to see the other colorful ribbons and stuff that meant he should go up there. And so, so consequently, we ended up with this. We ended up, now, now the erosion control has been, once this, I was immediately informed and we immediately <coughs> took steps uh, to put erosion control in place. Um, it's about 30 foot, 30 foot wide swath. Yeah, right there. Yeah, to, the, we've measured it off to approximately 30 feet. So yeah. he just went right through. He, he went, went straight. Right, straight. He went straight through. instead of making gold go, going uh, So there are still some trees up above it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. In fact, in fact, now we've got now we've got orange construction. Okay, fencing. There, there it is. There, there it is, right here. So as soon as can I see a thing oh, I, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, no. See what made made it confusing. First, first off, I think every I was out there with Brent and Jerry Donahoe. It was very extremely dense when we were out there. And number one, this little bump out is what stays, which you was depicted on Meridian's plan. So we had we had brought Mayor in, and he comes in with the big high powered crawls and so forth. And as Brent pointed out, he's up 12 feet in the air. So he's working down this line right here, and what happened, it shoots up here, which this, this didn't, fortunately Jerry caught, that caught it right in the beginning. Right. But by that time he had chewed o over to that Basically point. Basically it connected it. Yeah. What, what we did prior to even starting, Meridian went out with their field crews and laid out complete, no cut, to no deep, the line, the erosion control line. We reviewed it with Brent. We had two or three meetings up there. Jer Jerry Donahoe, who's one of our most cap capable field guys, is up there overseeing it, the whole thing. He happened to be over on a meeting with Raleigh Electric, where we're going over the electrical, and this happened in a matter of a half to an hour. As soon as, he didn't even call me to tell me. He called you, I think. Oh, he called me immediately. So, so here's so here's the here's a here's a rough depiction of the swath that got cut. So again, since we recently had sort of the same experience, yeah, deja, deja, deja vu all over again. You know, again, immediately the orange fencing goes up. Immediate, there was slash in there. I had them remove, allowed them to remove the slash. It's now supposedly been closed off so that it's not a travel corridor. And we know the step. The next step to take is to have a proposed uh, planting plan, um, unless unless you've come up with some well, I, I, I something that you're going to request an amendment to the plan. A, a, a couple different things. Uh, first thing, with your, you immediately sent our response that same day about fencing it, which he he, he has done. They put the added erosion control in, which he has done that. We're supposed to mulch down below. That was part of one of the immediate corrective right. actions. To there take. was so little leaf litter, and it was a lot of and exposed. And it's pure dirt. mud down there mm -hmm. after the rain of the past week. So I said, "Geez, don't go down there and mess it up." Because I told him I was coming tonight. What we're going to be? If can you flip down to the which do you want me to change? Uh, I want to go up towards Forest Ridge if you can do. Two All right, let me go over to the full point. Okay. And let me back it out a little bit. So where where do you want me to? Show okay, you? that's fine right there. The building that's going up right now, the foundation's going in for is right here. <clears throat> the septic system which is going down below will happen in conjunction with that. This will be the second building, but the area where building number one is going to go has all been leveled. That's where that big pile of fill was. Mm -hmm. It graded out very well. So as soon as it dries out, I'm going to hydro seed the whole thing. Okay. Okay. What I was going to propose to do, if it made sense, well, we got the hydro seeders in there blowing because they're going to be hydro seeding all down the access road. Mm -hmm. Is come in and hydro seed down there. 
down below, number one. Okay. Okay. Number two is we will we've eliminated as far as I can tell about we we cut whack twenty trees. Yeah, we, I would I would concur with that. Yeah. Yeah. We may be off one or two. Yeah. I come up with a replanting plan to do it would be right. option number one. But above and beyond that, what I've got Meridian looking at is to take that little nub out of there. Because I don't think those trees are going to live. Oh, the ones that were left in place? Yeah. Why, yeah. why would they not? Because, well, maybe they'll live, maybe they won't live. But I think if we could take those out and do a replanting across the back, I think it would serve well. Don't forget, we've got to come all around that area, right up above the top of it, right here. Here's the no-cut zone with the little bump out. Yep. That's where we kept the trees. That's where they did the clear cutting right there, the road going across. We've got to come all through in there for our septic system. Right. I don't know what we're going to do with the roots and stuff when we're coming down through. So I think we... I well, guess, yeah, but... Well, but remember there was also that original question that you, Jerry, and I had because Meridian, for some reason, showed the underground utility to connect to that, they showed them go, it going outside the limit of work and actually going through right. through well, that area, which you had called them to question on before that, before we even got into the situation of clearing. Right, that all up. happened over like a 24-hour period. Yeah. They're still working on that. I think Meridian, I think, and I have yet to get a straight answer out of Meridian, has got a fault in their plans with the way the lines run. Okay. So that whole area has to be looked at. But he, he, we we definitely filed up. It's us. Right. We cut where we shouldn't have cut. We took we whacked out about twenty trees. My suggestion is as soon as it dries out, we hydro seed that whole area because I want to hydro seed that hill so I don't get any runoff right. going down there and get that vegetated and get grass growing there. And then I have Meridian, who they supposedly are, well, they are looking at it now. We'll move that up a notch, notch to see how much we are going to impact that. And then if indeed it all stays, because I think it looks good there. When you come up to the site now and you look down right. there, it looks very good. We keep the fences up to keep everybody out of there during construction. And then we uh, come up with a planning plan to replace what we unlawfully cut down. In other words, see, wait and see what Meridian suggests. With yeah. the, but yeah. that's if you don't exercise an option of requesting an amendment to clear that's that exactly, notch. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, you've worked with Comac Brothers before, right? Comac does a lot of work for right. do, do they have some expertise in doing well, replanting? Yeah, what, what, I, what I would do is I do a combination of two things before I even brought it to the board. We've been working a lot with Tom McMullen, land, local landscape architect, okay. and he's done some of our bigger projects. He's pretty good. I put get the, him together with Comac, and then he draws up a plan with his arc, landscape architectural stamp on it, and he comes and he talks to you about what he's doing. Well, actually, I was going to suggest, John, that before you do that, what about yourself, with me included, and Comac, First off, find out from Meridian if some utility corridor has to go through there. Right. Let's let's find that out. That's what we. That's number one. And and then depending on what they find out, if if that's going to stay relatively undisturbed, undisturbed, and you don't have to ask for an amendment to do that, how about then you and I and Comac meet out there to take a look at that area of woods and just come up with a general observation of survivability for that area. Because, because if there's a question about how that's going to be negatively impacted from your project, I don't want to invest a whole bunch of time in just doing replanting of that small corridor if we've got, quote unquote, a bigger fish to fry by the fact that that woods might all be destabilized and, and toppled over um, inadvertently, that we might want to do a, a bigger shift in, in a planting effort. Would, does that sound reasonable? No, it sounds very it? reasonable, and I, I, I want to make sure we fix it, or we fix it permanently. We don't right. have a big problem. Yeah. There. Ken, just for clarification, can you move up just a little bit? Did, did I see something about a conservation restriction? Oh, you, you got oh yeah, yeah. That's all about that. So all that. Yeah. 
which so that land that lies below there is a conservation restriction. Right. And that we've limit. got a woods woods road that is a trail through there. And this this dashed line is actually the edge, I think. And so that little jut that goes up there, that's actually the property that's part of this development. Um, yeah, that's outside, that, that's the, outside, that's that outside the restricted area. Again, this, this line, I believe, is the edge of the conservation restriction. Okay, now I'm just trying to get a... That, that was all worked out in the original yeah, plan way, way back when. Yeah. So what, what are you building? Four buildings or something like that? Is that what yeah, this, what, what basically is hap happening here is... Uh, okay. Right, right. A build, right there, you can see a building number two, the building on the right, that's the building that's going in right yeah. now. We're following it up in this season with building number three, okay? And then we think we have a tenant for building number one, which will take the whole building right there. And then what's down below? Right there in our planning, in our, when we went through our planning board approval process, what this is a two-story, 36,000 square foot building. However, we're holding that in limbo because Clark School, that is down below, yeah, yeah. they want to put up a field house athletic center oh, there. So what we would what we would do, we would use our square footage that Plenty Board is going to put up, and we'd go with that. So we're holding all the construction at this point in time. Right here, there's a that's where he's got his rock road going in right yep. there. So we haven't touched anything. We won't touch anything from here over, and we're working with Clark School now in their new field house athletic facility. Oh, by the way, they had them go and we hand carried all those, the broken car and all that stuff. It's a lot of that. You didn't have them carry out that foolish roller that was from. It's like all. It's all out. It's all piled here to be picked up. Well, I meant no. You didn't have them hand carry that, no, did you? you? Didn't feel I that bad. I think they went in with their little <laughs> mini excavator. Well, the reason I was asking all that is I'm just wondering if, be, like you said, if you were to sit back and wait a while. Yeah, I think you know well, because then you with the weather, we, you can't really do anything right now anyway. As you say, it's, it's wet down there, uh, and if you're going to bring it. Cedar, and you got to do it all at once. So, well, I and mean, if you're going to do tree replanting too, or something, there may be a better way to spend that money to enhance right, the well, whole look of the whole place later on. Rather the, than the thing that came here, the reason why I wanted, I thought it was important that I came tonight to speak to the board. It's a mistake on our part. It was. I don't think we could have been. Brent's been up there, Brent has been back and forth helping us lay things out, making sure we didn't have a problem, and we had everything going, and then it happened. Well, Brent, this happens the third time, you might be. <laughs> well, you better learn how to put ribbons on trees. But it, <laughs> I think you, you had a... This problem. was totally, but this was totally accidental and inter inadvertent. <laughs> and you so, can see how it happened, Jeff. Yeah. Well, as soon as I got out there and saw the equipment they were using, I'm like, oh, yeah, geez. I mean, we just, you know, because you're out, we're, we, as John was saying, we were having a hard enough time bushwhacking just trying to find where things actually went. It was so thick. And so it Mer just. Meridian had gone in and staked out. Well, so what I'm trying to say we is couldn't that even we just didn't think that anyone could possibly see a flag that was more than 30 feet away from where they were because we didn't think about someone being up in the cab of a piece of equipment that had better lines of sight. Uh, it, we've got uh, Jerry Donahoe, our site super up there. I mean, he is the most conscientious guy. He, I think he'll attest to that. Yeah. So. Anyways. Yeah, no, the thought never crossed my mind that this was intentional or anything. No, there's I knew no problem that way. way. Yeah, we can action. understand why we, we should wait we, actually to yeah. make the next step. But we still, but we still, so before the commission tonight is a request for you to confirm and ratify the issued enforcement order. Right. It lays out and it gives us this, you know, maneuverability to work with it. And if, if ultimately it needs to be replanted, then that's what... The appropriate we don't know result is going to be. So do I hear a motion to that? What are we, what are we actually saying? You're We're confirming this stormwater enforcement order. Order. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And the following steps will be based on further information gathered by a single individual. Second? Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll try not to cut any more to this staff. <laughs> so, John, have Jerry call me because I still haven't heard anything about the drain pipe we're supposed to install at Clark School. Okay. I don't know why you are there. I was waiting for Meridian to do the marking on that. Yeah. So. And we'll get that. And we'll get that done before the lease starts on. Right, we got that. And then to, uh, we'll tidy this up a little bit and take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. notice of violation um well actually there's there's a request for a continuance on that, on that. Okay. yes um, the property owner um, this i'm going to mispronounce it Mackinac, um, Mackinac. Mackinac. her uh, career she had to travel for her, yep. her work and she's out of town as well as she also had a little uh, little accident turned or twisted her mm -hmm. leg or whatever, but the more important thing was that her... Yeah, the her cease and desist on this week. Uh, well, yes, and actually it's been marked out. If any of you folks have driven by there, you'll see that I installed stakes to denote where the wetlands had originally been delineated. Well, the wooden stakes are actually where a 15-foot no-cut, no-disturbance zone was supposed to be marked out. But earlier commissions had not required posts and stuff so uh, she she's twice removed from the owner who closed out the order for the replacement septic system so she was right she sent in a very a very nice letter and I've uh, uh, produced an introductory document which I'm going to share with the commission and hopefully recommend that we post on our website as well as giving her the uh, brochure that we got from MACC because she just didn't know anything at all about wetlands protection or enforcement uh, in, the, in the town or in the state. Uh, so if we could, um, we could certainly uh, go back up to the certificate of compliance requests in uh, five 31. Well, we want a continuation motion on that yeah. last one? Well, notice the violations since we haven't really opened it and it's not an advertised public hearing. It's an administrative item just with the commission's understanding that it's just going to reappear. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go up to the, to the top of the uh, certificate of compliance request, which is a certificate of compliance number 63-0661 of 531 to report term pike map 22 parcel lot 35 william and cheryl domain yeah so if the commission would so choose this project was for a replacement uh, subsurface sewage disposal system which ended up being installed in an area pre-existing uh, maintained lawn. system but you could look at it it's got like maybe a six or eight inch Asian right drive. beside the road there yeah. no no actually it's, it's way back okay I'm thinking so the other the, side, yeah. yeah so like I said that's why I have to keep orienting myself because actually this is off of the exit of the entrance road that goes into um, Fox Meadows yeah that's right. what they're showing here yeah. 
Like so, but anyway, it's uh, it's totally done. It's all grassed in. Um, I had inspected it earlier and gave them the suggestion as 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 they decommission the uh, straw wattle erosion control that they use the straw as a mulch on the areas that they needed to do some supplemental okay, seeding. Yeah. It gets full sun, so it tends to dry out, but therefore giving some organic mulch yeah. helped in the, in the grass took, and it's very well vegetated. So my recommendation, if the commission would so choose, is to issue a complete certificate of compliance with ongoing conditions, uh, which I believe they consist of just one ongoing condition, which is any fertilizer for landscaping or lawn care used within the developed portion of the property within 100 feet of the wetland resource <coughs> area or within 200 feet of the riverfront area shall be slow release organic granular type fertilizers low in nitrogen content. Okay, so the motion. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And brings us to the next one. Well, let me pass this around. That's a picture. I saw little kids in there riding their bikes today. Jesus, you don't see much of that. See a lot of sixty-year-old guys in spandex, right? <laughs> <laughs> we delete that from the. No. I'm not arguing with anybody about it. to the request for a certificate of completion for SMP number 27-2017, lot 5, Dodge Road, map 5, parcel 104, lot 5, Douglas Stone. So the commission may have seen the memo uh, that I wrote today and, and talked to Mr. Stone. We have the permission for a continuance and I would recommend a continuance be contemplated uh, because there's some remedial actions that need to be taken on the site. Not entirely sure of the timing of those things. Um, he actually also utilizes Comac Brothers to do his landscaping work and the gentleman that he um, talks to is currently on vacation. This is the new, near Alaska. new uh, This is the large house at the end of the common driveway. Okay. Yeah, on, I went uh, down on that. Lucia yeah. Herrick's yeah. property. Yeah. This is the one that has a large detached yeah. barn. So, yep. Let me, uh, so is that the owner then? Yes, Mr. Yes. Stone is, is the owner. The owner not yep. at all. Yep. So it's been prudent so far. So, so actually, let me show you. Uh, since I did a site visit, uh, quickly the bunny there today. The last couple of weeks has been yeah, very so, nice. So actually, yeah, there, but, but the erosion control needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. There is a burning of material up against the erosion control, so that needs to be graded out. Is that hay that I saw with burning there? You know, actually, looks like it. You know, some of it is decaying uh, straw water. Oh, okay. Because you had this, straw, wattle, and so the, silt fence. Well, the silt fence is there because that was the location of their loam stockpile while they were developing the site. Oh, okay. So we, since we had such a pile of material, that I always recommend the installation of the silt fence so we have something with height on it because uh, eight-inch straw right. wattle can be overwhelmed, you know, in just one, one little slumping of the side of the stockpile. Um, so anyway, the large detached. Uh, barn structure, which we're looking at the 
down gradient northern end of it right here, you can see we're starting to get a little rilling and stuff. Now what I don't know is whether the gutters overflowed, whether they're not working correctly, but also we'll notice that they also failed to install any overflows on them. So, and again, you can see we've got a well-developed drip line. I have a sneaking suspicion that they just haven't come in and done any supplemental work after yeah. putting the gutters on. I think yeah. the gutters may have been the last thing that was done. Um, even after they had spread the loam and done their initial um, seeding of the lawn, etc., uh, and the posts have not been put up. There's this is the area of the project that has um, both a 100-foot buffer zone coming into the um, lot, as well as the 100-foot vernal pool habitat area is coming from. Yeah, I know. Both of them come into this eastern side of the property. No, no. And north. Hmm? Northeast. Well, the end of the barn is the north side, and actually, so the long side, which is the one where those zones are coming in, is to the east. Okay. Yeah. Not that I'm going to quibble with you. Yeah. But remember, we decided that in order to <coughs> discourage inadvertent clearing and pruning, we were going to have some posts put up um, for the vernal pool habitat. It's no cut, no disturb. For the 100 foot buffer zone to the BBW, it's just um, What's that red? Ma managed area or something. What's that red right there? Um, that's, the flag? Yeah, that's just plastic <coughs> flagging from uh, a survey point from the early development of the, of the property. So. All right, so we need to move to uh, continue this? Yes, yeah, I've got his permission. Yeah. Know, he and I talked today and got the memo to him. Are we going to sign a date? Well, the next, the next meeting. The 11th. Okay, do I hear a motion to continue this on the docket for September 11th? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I think I've got another thing that we can put on here. I'm sorry, so who moved that? I did. Second. You yeah. did? Okay, Howard. <coughs> Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.